In Britain's conversation, the Nigel Farage Show. Mr. Nigel Farage. Thank you, Donald, and good evening, everybody. Well, I'm here in Strasbourg, where I've had a very busy day, an encounter in the chamber with the tea shop, the Irish Prime Minister, Leo Varadkar, followed by a lunch, which is unusual for me to be treated that civilly. And, of course, in the House of Commons, right now, the final stage of the e-withdrawal bill, they are voting on it as we speak. No huge shocks expected at this stage perhaps when it goes to the House of Lords in a few days time we'll get that but we'll keep you up to date with that with any news that develops. Now ever since President Trump decided he would run for president and went through that whole stage of primaries and then being the candidate and then now for nearly a year the sworn in president of the US journalists and mental health professionals have been speculating that his deterioration of vocabulary as they see it is a sign of cognitive decline but of course it was Michael Wolff's book wasn't it fire and fury that really called into question the president's mental health they said he was childlike and mercurial they even suggested that at times Article 25 of the US Constitution, that's the one whereby the president can be removed if he or she are just frankly not up to the job, whether Article 25 could be invoked, whether Trump could be taken out because he wasn't fit to do the job. Now, the Americans take health of their leaders very, very seriously. Lucky we didn't, of course. Otherwise, Churchill would never, ever have been Prime Minister. But they take it very seriously. Um, and Barack Obama appointed Admiral Jackson, US Navy, as his own presidential physician. And that role has continued under Trump. Jackson is a phenomenal doctor and a really great guy, said Dan Pfeiffer, Obama's senior advisor. So, all of this has happened. And Ronnie Jackson, Admiral Dr. Ronnie Jackson, has reported. And what he did, he put Trump through something that is called the Montreal Cognitive Assessment. And guess what? The president scored 30 out of 30, leading to a full health report that Trump is in good shape physically and mentally. He may be a stone or so overweight, but for a man of 71, he's doing pretty well. And you would have thought, would you not, that with Admiral Jackson having given this report, as I say, somebody who has been there under the previous administration as well, that that would have been enough to shut up the liberal media critics of America's 45th president. But you'd be wrong. Just have a listen to this media reaction to the news that the president is saying. The president's personal doctor memorably said during the campaign that he would be the healthiest individual ever elected to the presidency. Do you agree with that assessment? There was an incident recently where the president appeared to slur his words while giving an address. Um, did you look into what the cause of that might have been at all? Is in, in any way, uh, with the low, I, I understand that the blood pressure was within norms, but with the high cholesterol, are there any concerns for his heart? Thank you. Could you just elaborate in layman's terms if possible, and you've been doing a great job at that, uh, uh, what you ruled out in these cognitive tests? Uh, you know, there have been reports that the president has forgotten names, that he's repeating himself. Are you yeah. ruling out, yeah, uh, things like early onset Alzheimer's. Uh, yeah, Dr. Jackson, does the president do anything at all right now in terms of exercise? What, 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 what is his daily exercise routine if there is one? So there you go. According to the US mainstream liberal media, unless you're in the gymnasium for an hour every day, you're not fit to be the US president. Lucky I haven't got an American passport and I'm not running. Can't say I spend too much time in gymnasiums myself. But isn't it amazing that even when the top medical expert says the president is in good physical and mental health, the liberal media simply can't accept it. And is it any wonder that at some point today, and I don't know whether this will break in the course of this program, but at some point today there'll be a ceremony in the White House and the President is going, to, is going to give out the fake news awards. And these will go to the most corrupt and biased of the mainstream media. And he intends to present them to the losers today. I'm not sure many of them uh, will actually turn out. But of course, it is simply an all-out war between Trump and the US liberal media. Now look, I know the president, I've met the president several times, I obviously watch 
and listen very carefully to what he says and does. And I'd be the first to accept that he's unpredictable. He is idiosyncratic. And yeah, I get it. He didn't go to one of the top universities in America. He's not an academic. But you know what? He's smart. He thinks things through. He's very, very good. Very, very good at sending his enemies off on wild goose chases in one direction whilst he gets on with the job in another. I think he knows what he's doing. I think he's on the ball. I think he's smart. I certainly want him on my side and not on the other side. But I'm asking you, because I know that this man raises huge passions among you. But given, given what the Admiral has said, that the Donald is in excellent health, do you now accept that Trump is fit to be president? Now, of course, if you think that story on itself is fake news, you can call me on 0345 973 or maybe think it's time that these dissenters just simply shut up, in which case you can text to 84850, or maybe you think, more than me saying he's smart, Maybe you think the guy is bordering on genius, in which case, using the hashtag Farage and LBC, tweet at LBC. Um, and of course, you can watch me on Facebook from here in Strasbourg and comment there too. And Stephen calls me from Wimbledon, a new caller to the show. Good evening, Stephen. Good evening, how are you? Good, very well. So, do you think that this doctor, the Admiral, has got it right and that Trump is fit to be the US president? Well, it's ironic that, um, that you spoke about um, fake news. When you kind of started uh -huh. your show with fake news, because you initially said that doctors, plural, had given him a clean bit of health, when actually it wasn't doctors, it was one doctor, his own physician, that said it. Well, it was a... But yeah, OK, 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 Stephen, okay. it was the guy that Obama appointed. OK, let's move on. This is a doctor that also said that he will live for 200 years. Now, it's amazing, uh, isn't it? I don't know about you, I don't know about you, but that doesn't seem to be a very kind of clinically sound medical piece of uh, uh, information that a man will live for 200 years. So I think we can, I think, I think it's safe to say that there's an element of bias. Uh, obviously, this doctor is a, a, a Trump supporter, which is, oh. he, which is why he kind of gave the... Um, uh, it would be, it would be, it, 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 it's almost like he was had examined Superman. That's basically what he had. He had, he had you know, that's Superman Stephen, the Stephen, Stephen. I mean, this is what, 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 what the, the, the diagnosis that came back. But on a serious note, Nigel, you, you've kind of given him a lot of. Um, you said he's smart. You said that he is uh, on your side. Yeah, this is a man that only a couple of days ago made extremely racist remarks. So, I mean, it doesn't really play well with the people that believe that you yourself are racist. Well, you are, Stephen, um, Stephen, 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 you're moving on to a whole new territory. I, Stephen, I will comment on that, but briefly, but we are debating whether he's fit to be the US president. Now, look, the comment that he could live till 200, uh, clearly the Americans like a degree of exaggeration, although I do understand life expectancy is moving on. But, Stephen, where you are wrong, dead wrong, bang wrong, is the idea that this guy is a Trump supporter because Admiral Jackson was appointed by Barack Obama to be the presidential physician and Trump has kept him in the role and to quote Dan Pfeiffer, Obama's senior advisor, who said just this week on Twitter, Dr. Jackson is a phenomenal doctor and a really great guy. So Stephen, would you agree with me that this doctor, who may over -egg it a bit, but okay. this doctor is that, neutral. So you're, su you're suggesting that his appointment was because he was a Democrat, then? I, no, I'm no, not suggesting suggest anything. I am... No, no, no. no. What I'm saying he is... Then he can't make the assumption that he's not a Trump supporter. Well, <sighs> Stephen, Stephen, you, you, in the way that you presented it, sort of said, well, oh, Trump's picked this... Trump's, Trump's picked this mate out ridiculous from New York. I, can, I, I have justification for saying that because of the ridiculous, well, ridiculous over-the-top um, bill of health he gave an old man who's overweight, who has a terrible diet, who would live <laughs> maybe another 10 years, let alone 200. So that, in itself tells, that in itself tells me there's an element of, um, 
of, of support there. <laughs> Stephen, I can't fight you on some of this. I mean, <laughs> you've got me laughing. But, <laughs> but, but, Stephen, but, Stephen, I mean, by the way, Stephen, have you ever done the Montreal cognitive test yourself? No, I have never done that. No, well, it seems to be a series of sort of recognising animals and rearranging letters, and I, I don't know whether I'd pass it, I've no idea. Stephen, do you accept that the President got a score of 30 out of 30 on this cognitive assessment, and whatever his faults, as you see it, may be, as a human being, he is fit to be the US President? Well, I mean, <clears throat> I'm not suggesting that he's, a, he's an incomplete or he's a cretin or anything like that. The man obviously has some kind of savvy and some intelligence because he's run businesses. So it's not about Absolutely. whether he... I, I think the point really is whether he uh, has the temperament. Or, I mean, you can have mental health issues and still be a genius. You can have narcissism traits. Um, you can be a, a, have a, a racist traits, and you can still be quite intelligent. Um, the fact that the, the, the diagnosis is whether, whether he's fit to be president OK. Uh, well, well, Stephen, 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 Stephen. The press have called him all these things, and yes, he was very condemnatory of certain countries uh, the other week. Um, I don't think that was a direct slur at people's races. It was about the corruption and the way some of these countries are run. However, however, Stephen, um, I put it to you uh, that he's passed the cognitive test. And I think the fact that the press pack in D.C. simply refuse to accept these findings. I think it says more about them than it does about Trump. Stephen, first-time caller, great call, made me laugh. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC, live from Strasbourg, and it's 7.15. Donald Trump stumps his critics by taking the Montreal Cognitive Assessment Test and getting 30 out of 30. So the president is not mad. I have to say, this is not the first time in my lifetime that this criticism of US presidents has been used. It is a very, very low trick, and it's something that was consistently done about Ronald Reagan. Consistently, questions were asked about whether he was mentally up to doing the job. And indeed, in Bill Clinton's first troubled years, there were many in the US media questioning whether he mentally was up to the job and with Trump it's an all-out assault um, and kind of even when he gets 30 out of 30 in this test they simply don't believe it but I can see why they get upset with him because boy this man just baits the media here's a series of Trump tweets that went out on the 6th of January this year he said now that Russian collusion, after one year of intense study, has been proven to be a total hoax on the American public, the Democrats and their lapdogs, fake news mainstream media, are taking out the old Ronald Reagan playbook and screaming mental stability and intelligence. And then he goes on. Actually, throughout my life, my two greatest assets have been mental stability and being, like, really smart. Crooked Hillary also played these cards very hard and, as everyone knows, went down in flames. I went from very successful businessman to top TV star to President of the United States on my first try. And I think that would qualify me as not smart but genius and a very stable genius at that. And when Trump does things like this, those who don't like him just start screaming. They can't control themselves. They can't believe this man. And they can't see he's taking the mickey out of them. They just don't see it. Now, look. He passed this test. The other comment the doctor made, the chap that Obama appointed, uh, the admiral, who, who had, has got these rave reviews, he did say that bodily he thought Trump could live to 200, which is odd and is prompting many messages from you. Stuart says he could live to 200. Well, if money buys life, he won't be the only one still around. Lynn says, oh, God, a doctor can't talk tongue-in-cheek. He'll live for 200 years. Dear, dear. And Mo says Churchill wasn't thin... And he was a great man. Well, Churchill wasn't thin. And if you believe some of the accounts, you know, he was even drinking a sort of, quite a sort of light glass of white wine with breakfast uh, in the later uh, years of his life. Of course, he smoked big cigars constantly. And in 1941, on a visit to the White House, when he did his absolute best to persuade the Americans to join the war, he actually suffered a heart attack. And three days after that heart attack, he spoke to the Canadian Parliament, where he said... 
that Hitler had said that the British nation would be strangled like a chicken, he said, some chicken, some neck. So it is actually possible to be a good leader and not necessarily spend your mornings in the gymnasium, I would put to you. Mike in Southgate is my next caller. Mike, do these cognitive assessment tests prove that he's fit to be president or not? Well, if I was his doctor and he threatened me, I would do whatever he said. I believe <laughs> you are a bit blinkered in this. Um, it's like any company. If there's a huge turnover of staff, there's something wrong with the management. It's the same with him. He's doing things wrong all the time. You wouldn't work for somebody like that, would you? Unless there was something to go for. He's obviously paying those paying the doctor in order to give him the report. Otherwise, the doctor would uh, resign. That, we'll see it, we'll Mike, see that is an outrageous when comment. He his book, what actually he thinks of. Oh, that is an outrageous comment, isn't it? I mean, the previous caller outrageous. suggested that... See the way he behaves. Look, if you behave like that, and every time somebody brought you up, why do you say this? Oh, no, I didn't say that. Why did you say this? No, I didn't say that. I said this, I said this, I said this. There is something wrong. You can't... You have to believe what you see, not believe what the reports say. But, Mike, he didn't. You know, this doctor isn't a golfing mate from New York who he's matter. got in and bunged, and bunged ten going, grand to. If you don't give me the report the way I want it, I'm going to do A, B, C, D. How did he get to his place in the first place? Did you ever study how he got to be a multimillionaire? If you study that, well, you see all the things he pulled out with the mafia and all the rest of it, and his father, you would see it wasn't because of his ability. It was because he managed to persuade, if you don't do this, I'll do this. If you don't do this, I'll do this. It's the, right. the so, same with the So, Mike, let's just be clear. Let's just be clear. You're saying he threatened the doctor, yeah? And I, I believe so, yes. Well, in ten years' Mike, time, when the doctor writes his report, we'll find out the truth. <laughs> It's fake but he news. didn't. He, but but Obama appointed this guy. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. And, and and look, Mike. That. And you say certain things. This is going to happen. I'm going to pull this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. What happens? He has to do what he's told. <laughs> Mike, I just don't buy it. You and yeah, you're quite right. Would be would 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 do exactly what he said. After the way he behaved, I should think, I should think, I should think, if the doctor, you I should think, Mike, if the doctor had come out and said that Trump was mentally unstable, he would be fated as the champion of Washington, D.C. and New York. He you would probably he get television roles you advising on health. You place by threatening, do you? You just don't know. We'll Ma wait in ten years' time. Mike, 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 he was part of the real estate game. His report. He was but part of the real estate the game. man behaves, there all must right, be something right. wrong. Has to be. All right, Mike. Mike, you've made your point loud and clear. I think, I mean, look, you know, I, I, I know Trump sets himself up to be criticised, but I do think that comment, frankly, is a bit outrageous. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm in a tiddly minority. Maybe you all think the bloke is crackers. He's a thug. He put a gun to the head of a doctor and said, unless you give me 30 out of 30, bad things will happen to you. I don't believe it. James is calling from Huddersfield and is another new caller to the show. Good evening, James. Good evening, Nigel. How are you? I'm well, thank you. But Good. is the President well? Is the President well, James? This is the question. Um, I think it actually, in a way, goes a bit deeper than this. I think, unfortunately, Trump is a sort of character who if he said turn left, everyone would jump on his back and say, no, don't you mean right? And I think it goes even deeper than that. I think it actually goes back to Brexit. I know that might be a different topic, but I think that was a kind of catalyst of, as you said, the normal man and woman in the street having their say. And America yep. kind of followed suit. And the problem is, is that these Washington elite really, really, really don't like it. And anything they can do to, you know, diminish that, they'll do. I mean, you know, it's, it's been shown that... a you know, like you said, Obama appointed him. Obama appointed his records. And my last point is as well, is that if if we were to oust a politician who ever said something stupid, none of them would be in office, surely. You know, they've all said stupid well, things. You know. Of course. And, 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 and all of us, James, whether we're in politics or living our normal daily lives, we all say and do stupid things. Of course we do. Exactly. But the point you raise is a very interesting one. I mean, it's not that this press corps... In, in New York and D.C. are critical of the president, they actually actively hate him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, of course they do. Of course they do. They actively hate him, and they'll do absolutely anything they can to oust him. I mean, it's very funny how... 
and I'll probably get slaughtered by this for me next caller, but it's very funny how <laughs> Hillary had her illness do as well. And, you know, it were kind of glossed over and glossed over and glossed over. Trump says something slightly wrong, and everyone's all over it. And you've got to think, why yeah. is that happening to him? You know, Because they want to stop to Trump... James, exactly. they want to stop Trump, the elites exactly. want to stop Brexit, and, and I'll talk a bit more about that in a few minutes' time. Um, and, and James, I wouldn't argue that Trump was a perfect personality, but you know oh, what? No. You no. can't make an omelette without breaking eggs. He's in there, exactly. he's shaking up the system, and the American economy is growing at more than 3% and set, in my view, to rocket further higher. James, exactly. I thank you very much indeed for your call. Thank you. Thank you. And James making the point that actually these people just hate him so much and, you know, I played you that clip earlier, nearly a minute, of all those different reporters from media organisations just not accepting what they were told. And yes, the doctor saying that Trump could live to 200, I think he was having a bit of fun too, wasn't he, at their expense? But of course, it's very difficult. Jokes aren't popular in the modern world. No one's allowed to laugh anymore. Michael is calling from Canary Wharf. Michael, good evening. Good evening, Nigel. Nice to speak to you. Um, Good to speak to you. Another new caller of the show. Is he fit for the job, Michael? Of course he is. Of course he is. The fact, uh, well, I listened to the, uh, some of the footage earlier, uh, sorry, the uh, mm. video footage earlier. Um, the fact yeah, that yeah. the cognitive part of the test was optional, the doctor didn't, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, the doctor didn't actually want to carry out the, uh, the cognitive part. It wasn't necessary. Trump insisted on that being done. Wasn't, wasn't that the case? I believe that's the case, and he got 30 out of 30. A home run, I think, in American exactly. sporting terms. A few weeks ago, everyone was going, oh, he's got mental illness issues and he's not stable. So he then opts to take the optional, which he didn't have to, the cognitive part, to prove that he's actually fine, to sort of, you know, yeah. quash all the doubters, if you like. And then yeah. he's not coming out like your previous caller, Mike, and saying, well, he's obviously threatened the doctor. <laughs> I actually think it's a, it's a brilliant coup on his behalf. Um, he's, he's, playing, he's playing up to the media in the way that only Donald Trump can, and cleverly. Absolutely. And, and uh, I say hats off to the gentleman. He's doing exactly what he, he said in his, uh, in his manifesto yep. sort of leading up to the I election. Know. I know. Um, I he's know. fulfilling all of the promises. It's not like, you know, everybody, everybody's he's doing what he said he was going to do. Do you know, Michael, I think you're absolutely bang on the money with that because he's restoring faith in the democratic process. Rather than just lying to people at elections, he's doing his damnedest to carry out the manifesto. Michael, thanks very much indeed for your comments. Well, lots of passion, lots of thoughts, lots of calls um, and messages on this subject. Uh, we will, of course, bring you live at the Fake News Awards if it happens in the course of the next half an hour. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show. It's 7.30. The 45th president of the USA takes the Montreal cognitive assessment test and gets 30 out of 30 and you'd have thought that had ended any argument that mentally he wasn't fit for the job but no 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 the liberal mainstream media in America won't accept it and there are people calling this show and texting and tweeting saying he must have threatened the doctor boy he's a man who raises great emotions now here today in Strasbourg we had a visit from the Taoiseach the Irish Prime Minister Leo Varadkar um, he spoke in the Parliament we had our opportunity to speak to him as well have to say I don't think I've ever met the leader of any European Union country who was such a huge ardent supporter of the European project. Um, but I did ask him one or two questions today. You are part, of course, of a big attempt here and elsewhere to frustrate and to attempt to overturn Brexit. You don't want Britain to leave because you know if they do, others will leave too. And I would just say this to you. I don't want a second referendum on Brexit. Absolutely not. But I fear that you are all working together with Tony Blair and Nick Clegg to make sure we get the worst possible deal. I say that because I've seen it all before. The difference is, if you force the Brits to do it again, there'll be a different outcome. Yeah. 
what I referred to there, of course, was the fact that the Irish voted no to the Lisbon Treaty a few years ago and were forced to vote again. Now, Varadkar, in response, said, no, I'm not involved in any plots with anyone. Um, I, <laughs> he said, I've never met Blair. I've only met Clegg once. I'm not party to any plot against the UK. I'm a friend of the United Kingdom. Well... Fine, um, you know, he's he's absolutely fully entitled to respond to me like that. But, very interesting, over the course of this week, uh, Juncker, I mean, Juncker today said, even if you leave, you could invoke Article 50 to rejoin. So the big message coming out of all the leaders in Brussels this week is please don't go, please have another referendum, please reconsider what you have done. Now, the European Union Withdrawal Bill has cleared the House of Commons after MPs gave it a third reading by 324 votes to 295. That's a majority of 29. Um, we will try and get LBC's political editor Theo Usherwood on at some point because there were some very interesting amendments put down by the Labour Party. But as it stands, that's gone through the House of Commons. It now goes to the House of Lords. We're expected to be debated on the 30th and 31st of this month. And boy, there's going to be some fight there. Ken Clark says he hopes that Piers make an enormous number of changes. Jacob Rees-Mogg says that Piers would look ridiculous if they tried to force a second referendum on the British public. And if they did, the institution could well get into difficulties. Well, I have to say uh, that my views are a bit stronger than Jacob's, but I'll save them for the 30th and 31st. Your texts and tweets coming in. That doctor physician is not not so much phenomenal as a phenomenon, says Simon. Just because Trump doesn't conform to the liberal norms doesn't make him ill or insane, says Chris. When will fake news cross the Atlantic and infiltrate our political elite too, says Tom from Basingstoke. Matey, it already has. And a, a very interesting tweet here. You know what? Sometimes I just think maybe President Trump is a genuine genius. The whole media machine is against him. The American government is against him. Our government is against him. But he's winning every day. Well, I have to say, some truth in that. Ollie is calling me from Wembley, a new caller to the show. Good evening, Ollie. Evening, Nigel. Good evening. So, does 30 out of 30 convince you that he's fit to do the job? Absolutely not. I mean, we all know the story of Anders Breivik, um, the Norwegian sort of neo-Nazi terrorist. Um, he was also ordered to have a psychiatric evaluation, and the results came out that he was perfectly sane. Um, we need to understand that psychiatric tests are actually speculative. They're an opinion, they're not fact. So well, we well, Ollie, we Ollie, Ollie, the critics of Trump said he didn't have the mental faculties to do the job. They said he was showing early signs of dementia. That clearly isn't the case, is it? Well, at the end of the day, I mean, for a doctor to say that he can live up to 200 years old, to me, that says to me Trump had either threatened him and he's sending out a coded message to the public that I've been threatened that, yes, this man can live up to 200 years, even 1,000 years, but whatever, whatever he wants me to say. So, to, to me, his, 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 his evaluation is not true. It's just, it's, it's rubbish to me. Do you honestly, Ollie? do you honestly and truthfully think that the US president can threaten individuals and would get away with it? We know how vindictive this man is. He doesn't let anything by him lightly. Um, he's been attacking everyone left, right and center. You know it, you're his close buddy. Um, he, he's a very vindictive man. So if, I mean, if I was his doctor, I would say he, would, he could live forever if he threatened me. <laughs> Ollie, he certainly, he certainly divides people into friends and enemies. He certainly has people on his side or against him, and that is absolutely true. And a lot of people who've known him far longer than me say he's been a very loyal friend to them. So I understand that. But the idea that he somehow threatened the doctor, I just don't buy it. But let me ask you, Ollie, I mean, do you, is, is it your view, is it your view that he's just unsuitable to be US president? The thing is, um, I've got uh, a couple of sort of... Uh, Psychology, uh, psychological uh, degree uh, qualified friends and they're telling me that a lot of the evaluations are speculative their opinions they're not fact you cannot say that someone is mentally fit based on any particular kind of behavior or, or unfit based on any kind of 
behavior. So okay. to me, it's 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 just an yeah. evaluation, and it's an opinion. But he did voluntarily. He. He did voluntarily do it, Ollie. I wonder what more he has to do. Ollie, you made your point. I thank you. Um, and somebody who agrees with Ollie very strongly on Twitter. 30 out of 30 is what I'd expect from North Korea. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I do wonder how the test was conducted. I suspect Trump was given a fair bit of leeway with these questions. Best of three. It, it's really interesting that those people who don't like Trump, and I know in the United Kingdom that there are plenty of you, but, it, I mean, the idea that somehow, you know, the doctor would have been bumped off if he hadn't said he'd lived to 200, I just, to me, the whole thing is beyond belief. You may not like the US president, but to think that he would have threatened this doctor to get a positive analysis, I just think it's nonsense. Robert is calling from Putney. Good evening, Robert. Good evening, Nigel. Um, I think it's just a question of credibility, really. Um, he doesn't do himself any favours. I mean, if he's given his weight as 239 pounds or 17 stone, 108 kilos, and he's gotten taller since his last medical, I mean, a 71-year-old man that gets taller, I don't think he's done himself any favours at all. Right, but it's the doctor putting his name to this stuff, not Trump, isn't it? Absolutely. I just question what 71-year-old man has, in fact, gotten into taller since his last medical. That does seem to be a little bit surprising and suggests a mistake, doesn't it? Well, a mistake. I mean, he's got one point um, under clinically obese. I mean, he's yeah, he is a bit man. overweight. I wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, want to be classed obese in the eyes of the world either. No, I mean, Robert, he is perhaps a bit overweight. Um, he maybe doesn't necessarily have the best diet in the world, but kind of so what? I mean, would we worry? If we had a fat prime minister, would that would that be, oh, goodness me, she can't be prime minister or he can't be prime minister because they're two or three stone overweight? We couldn't really care less, could we, Robert? No, I don't mind that he's fat in the least. I think the point is that somebody has clearly been telling stories on the medical. I mean, he's not only 239 pounds. There's no way an overweight, you know, 71-year-old man is only 17 stone. Look at him. He's massive. You know, and if I must admit, like that, which he's, they he has, given that he's gotten taller, I mean, they can lie about anything. He's a big fella. He is a big fella. A big of fella. that, there's no doubt. I, I sort of think he's, he's rather like an ox. He keeps on going. Do you think, yeah, though, that big. mentally, and and this is what matters, isn't it? Do you think mentally he's he's up to the job? It's a tough one. I mean, I think he's mad as a box of frogs, and he's a very, very silly boy, sort of an overgrown child. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he is sort of technically capable of doing the job. I mean, they did vote him in, which well, yeah. I mean, doesn't do the American people any favours, to be honest. And, and, and mad as a box of frogs, you call him, but is he doing a good job? I don't think so. I mean, really, he's just letting the American people down, I think. I mean, on the whole, they're a good bunch, but he's just awfully, awfully embarrassing. I mean, he's not much... All right, well, do you know what? Do you know what? Whether he's embarrassing or not, whether he's mad as a box of frogs, which I disagree with totally, I'll tell you something. He's putting in place the manifesto on which he was elected. Americans are getting back to work. The economy is growing. By many measures, he ain't doing too badly. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC, live from Strasbourg, and it's 7.45. President Trump scores 30 out of 30 with the Montreal Cognitive Assessment, and yet hardly any of you appear to be impressed by that. Some are saying that he must have threatened the doctor. Others think it's rather like a North Korean test where he had three goes at answering it. And whatever he does, he can't convince his critics that he's mentally fit to be the US president. And least of all, that press pack, that liberal media, mainstream media press pack in Washington, D.C., and a lot of very strong opinions coming from all of you. David says, the doctor performed no test of personality. The Montreal tests are far too simple to fail. Have a look at them online. I'm having a look here. Mm, not that easy to me. Um, Don says, the doctor is a highly respected medical professional and admiral. Joe says, lefty logic, a few pounds overweight and you're a loon. <laughs> well, there are a few people who seem to be suggesting that. Denise says, he's not a politician, he's a businessman. Successful one at that. Great to have someone not from the elite. Wish we could have that in the UK. Um, let's go to Dave, who's in London, in Colney in London. Dave, good evening. 
I don't know. There. I don't know. Just listen, for quite a long time, I, I sort of followed you and your your compilation of your philosophy on things, and I've I've supported it, and I've voted my way on the back of your what's written on the side of your tin. And I'm, I'm, yeah. I regard myself as a thinking man, and along with other thinking men, we've we've given you our support. But I think there's a bit of a danger that you will erode the value of our support by being so sycophantic with regards to Donald Trump. Because at the bottom line, uh, we regard him well, as a common oik, isn't he? Well, d- d- he, don't. He's can I just say this? Can, and can I just say this? He, he, listen to me, Nigel. His manner I'm and his appearance and his behaviour does suggest he's from the lower orders. And I think I think I think there was there was there was it would, it would erode the credence of your value and what you stand for by associating with that. Well, what I would say to you is this. He may not be from the Ivy League or Oxbridge. He might not have gone to Eton or any of the American equivalents. And he might have tastes that um, are more uh, towards McDonald's than going to the opera. And all of that may, be, may, may well be absolutely right and true. But you know something? Just occasionally, the political system needs a really big shock, Dave. And I think that's what Trump is about. Trump is there to try and shake up American politics and turn things in a different direction. And does it really matter, Dave, if he's a common oik, to quote you? What's your understanding of the term oik? You come from that that background. Well, I don't know. I mean, an oik is somebody that is looked down upon by those in the upper classes. Yeah, well, what it is is basically they 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 are, they are people of ill code. They haven't they have they're not they're not cohesion to the code of good good and right and proper. They they plow their way through life, treading on people on the way, and then they they basically give the outward appearance of being successful and lovely and everything else, and uh, and uh, and they love bomb every people everybody on the way. And, and the bottom line is that they're they're they're, they're vile people. And I, I tell you what, I think you're a decent chap. Of decent code, of decent breeding, and I think to associate yourself and to uh, uh, endorse this guy's code, I think you do you harm, and you'll you'll start to lose. All right, no, Dave, I'm listening to you. I'm listening to thinking people like me. The the, 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 the value you've got. I'm listening to you, and also, Dave, I listen to people chattering when I'm over in America. And a lot of those in the smart restaurants and hotels say, oh, he's just like a lorry driver. He's so common. He's so ghastly. He's so vulgar. You know, and and, and, and I just think maybe, Dave, maybe there's a little bit too much snobbery in politics. But I take the points that you make. Um, If he failed his medical, what then? Um, How would they have hid it? Um, How would they have covered it up? Um, his his followers won't believe anything bad about him, says Russell. Well, Russell, his detractors won't believe anything good about him, so that kind of cuts both ways. But it wouldn't have been interesting if he had failed. I wonder what would have happened. I guess, but well, I know, actually, they'd be screaming, 25th Amendment, 25th Amendment, get him out and get him out immediately, because they hate him. And they hate someone that believes in nation-state. They hate someone who's unashamed to be a patriot. They hate someone who wants to get tough on immigration. They hate someone who calls out radical Islam. And they hate someone who they think is ill-educated and too common to do the job. They really do hate him. Craig is a new caller from Eastbourne. Good evening, Craig. Good evening, Nigel. Uh, just on that point, um, to get a yes. 25th Amendment um, amendment impeachment, you need the vice president to say that he's unfit for office and two-thirds of Congress as well. Yes. <laughs> it's not that's highly yeah, it's, unlikely to happen in all reality. Yeah. yeah um, it's not I, an easy just, thing to do. But, but, but yeah. Craig, just quickly, just quickly, in the book Fire and Fury, though, it was speculated about and it was said that this sort of conversation was happening inside the White House. I don't really believe it. Oh, well, there's uh, speculation on everything. We've got um, we've got a society here in the UK and over in the States and over on the European continent at the moment of self-appointed psychiatrists, I think, um, who all seem to be able to specialise in Trump's mental health, um, mm. which I find highly entertaining. Um, I, 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 I'm not a big fan of Trump in the sense that I do think he's, an, he's got a big ego. He's not the most polished of speakers or anything in the world. Um, but I also think Hillary Clinton had an ego the size of Mount Everest as well. Um, that's not unusual for polit- politicians at the top top of their game, um, quite frankly. No. 
But no. I, I think that what the American people need to do and everyone else needs to start doing is recognizing that this man is the president. And if people carry on going down these ad hominem attacks and constantly building up straw man arguments and with all the name calling, what they're doing is creating societies of people who will just vote against everything they stand for. Because like me, I'm getting sick to death of and bored with people who constantly try and make up conspiracy theories um, that they hope will stick. And it's getting very tiresome and boring. Craig, I think you make some very, very good points there. I thank you very much indeed for your call. Sean says, as usual, Nigel, the Liberal press just can't accept the results. Uh, Michael says, the degree to which people feel compelled to sneer at Trump with such self-regarding piety reveals their intolerance of contrary views. It's not democratic and it's not dignified. Well, Michael, I do understand what you're saying. And, and, and in response to Dave, you know, I do not support everything the president does. I don't applaud every one of his statements, even as a supporter. Sometimes I think, goodness me, why is he doing that? But he is getting on with the job. And I hate this snobbery that we've got. And it's same here. Same here. I had in UKIP a lot of working class candidates. We've got working class people here as MEPs for us. And you want to see the, the way the rest of the established career politicians look down their noses at the fact that some of our people in UKIP used to run market stalls, etc. Isn't it time we had a few more ordinary, decent people in politics? I think so. Johnny in Exeter is our last caller of the evening and a new caller to the show. Good evening, Johnny. Good evening, Nigel. How are you? I'm well. I'm, but I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of laughing, Johnny, at just the sheer hatred of those that dislike Trump, who just refuse to accept that he might have passed this test. OK, but you, you have just contradicted yourself, and we haven't even started talking yet. You just said that the, the sheer hatred of people that dislike him, well, either they dislike him or, or they hate him. You, can't, you, you, you can be both, but well, not everyone well, well, can be well, both. Well, I, well, I don't well, particularly well. like him. Yep. I don't particularly like him, but I certainly don't hate him. I don't wish him uh, malice. OK. I, I don't think... OK. I, you know, I, 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 I like some things that he does. Uh, I like mm -hmm. the fact that, as you say, he's shaking up, uh, you know, what has become the norm. That, you know, he's shaking up the normative system, something that we've got used to uh, politicians saying lots of things and not doing many of them. Um, you know, uh -huh. and he, he's shaking up. But as um, I don't know if you're aware of Sam Harris. Sam Harris is a, um, he's a neuroscientist, stroke philosopher, American public intellectual he's quite well known he you know he debates a lot yep. of people um publicly um and he said uh, someone that i respect um you know i tend to uh, align my views with him uh, quite a lot anyway he said that uh, trump uh, does uh, does and says a lot of things a lot of the right things for the wrong reasons um and and i that resonates with me um i i i think uh, on the point of this te this um yeah. this uh, 30 point test I think it's um, a straw man, as, as uh, I've heard the, the term used tonight already. I think it's been held up as a straw man because it doesn't say anything except that he's, he has right. Alzheimer's and that he's... No, you know, fine. Well, that, and that's what, it was no, that's what it was designed to do. We've got to end it there. A final text. Nigel, I wish I'd been sitting next to him when I was taking my exams. I'd have got 100%. Well done, McDonald, says David. <laughs> We've had quite a laugh with this. You've been listening to The Nigel Farage Show. I'm back tomorrow night in London from 7. At 10 tonight, it's Ian Collins. But up next, it's Clive Bull. Nigel, thanks very much indeed. Now